Everything God created is for a purpose. Everything was made for a reason. A car was made for transportation. A bed was made for lying on it. Dresses to cover our nakedness. Every tool has its specific function and use. All creations continually worship and praise God for who He is and what He has done. Revelations chapter 5 verses 13 says, And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, and under the earth and in the sea, and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Man just joins in the worship as part of God's creation. We are all designed for worship, okay? So man was made primarily for worship unto God. You were not made to only eat, sleep, go to school, work and earn money, enjoy life and just die. Nah, that's too secular a life. That's more like a rat race kind of life. You were made for so much more. Now worship comes naturally to all of God's creation. The way the breeze blows, the ocean moves, the way the trees and everything that God created are singing praises to God. We either direct our worship to the true God or the false ones. Your whole body was made to worship God. The way your hair is, the way your legs are, your eyes, your nose, every part of your body shows the different ways that God desires to be worshipped. In Romans chapter 12 verses 1, the Bible says, My Christian friends, God has been so very good and kind to us. And that is the reason why I'm asking you very strongly to offer your bodies to Him. Bring your bodies to Him as a sacrifice that is still alive. Give yourselves to Him completely so that He may be happy because of you. And this is how you can really worship God. God designed worship as a core part of every human being. Unfortunately, after the fall, man's worship has been twisted and redirected to other things such as movies, social media, sport, food, the internet, and many others. We may not call it worship, but that's what it is. Think about this. How many hours do you spend on Netflix? How much time do you spend browsing on the internet and chatting on social media? How much can you pay just to go get to see your favorite player, actor, or artist? How much can you spend on your favorite food? Oh, yes, I'm coming for y'all. How much do you spend on candies and beer? Then how long do you spend in prayer? How often do you read your Bible? How obedient are you to God's word? Has your money ever been used for the spread of the gospel to the nations of the world? Worship to God is much more than singing a slow song in church and lifting up hands. Worship shouldn't be limited to Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays only. In fact, it should be an every day and every time kind of thing. We can and we should worship God, or even in our cars. Worship for a child of God is to be a lifestyle. Worship is to be a career. It's an attitude and a character that we must carry wherever we go. Now, everything that we do in the form of worship to God, everything that we do is to be in the form of worship to God. Now, when we learn the truth about God and the world that He created, we're worshiping God with our minds. We're reading God's Word. We're reading Christian devotionals when we're discussing Bible truths with fellow believers. And that is an act of worship to God. Jesus, when He was 12, would always retire to the synagogues to discuss with the elders and the teachers of the law about the truth of the Word. Now, those were acts of worship to God. We're to worship God by expressing our feelings to Him. Now, when we're sad, when we're joyful or in pain, we're to go to God recognizing that He is God of all. Are you feeling sad about an issue? Are you excited about a situation in your life? Maybe you need to take your emotions and feelings to God, believing that He can help you. You can worship God by reading His Word and stepping out in faith to act upon it. For example, you're driving and you see someone stranded on the way, and you assist him or her. Now that will be an act of worship unto God. Maybe you're reading your Bible and you see how Jesus helped the poor and the needy, and you go out and give grants at an orphanage, and you also go on to adopt a child that you met homeless and hungry. You are worshiping God through those acts. Now, I want you to worship God in the way that you treat people in your life, in your parents, your siblings, your friends, your colleagues, your classmates, and even your enemies. The question is, how do you treat the people in your life? 
How do you treat your parents? Do you honor your parents as the Bible says? What about people who hurt you? Do you love your enemies? Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 5 verses 44 says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, this doesn't mean that you should go about hugging people who bully you or something like that. It just simply means treating people with love, kindness, compassion, and forgiveness. And that's also an act of worship to God. So I want you to do it remembering what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25, verses 40. He says, Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. The way you respond to people's behaviors towards you shows what's most important to you your ego, your pride, the fact that you are right, or God. And the fact that you live a life of worship to God doesn't necessarily mean that you won't fall into sin at all. In fact, look at King David, for example. He lived a life of complete worship to God. David would never take any step without God's consent and approval. Whenever he fell into sin, he would go back in total surrender and absolute repentance to God. No wonder God called him the man after his heart, because he knew how to go back to God. Listen, we are God's people. We are created for His pleasure. We are created for worship unto God. The Bible describes us as the people that God formed for Himself, that we may proclaim His praise. According to Isaiah chapter 43, verses 21, we are made by God and for God, and until we really connect with Him, we will never be fully satisfied. Man was wired for worship, and we continually find things to give our worship to. In other words, all the other things in our lives that we worship, though we call it devotion and dedication, can never give us the satisfaction we require. So what is that thing that you're worshipping today in the place of God? Are you worshipping power? Is it your marriage? Or your spouse? Maybe it's sex. Your kids. Money. Popularity. But whatever it is that you have elevated in your life more than God, you know, that's what you're worshipping. And worshipping the created things instead of the creator of the things is what leads us to sin. It is our idolizing fame and power that makes us able to kill people or do whatever thing that is required just to get it. Now what position does God have in your life? Do you value your food more than God? You have an opportunity today to redirect your worship to the originally intended place, and that is to God. So take time. Take a very cognitive look at your life. Look all through your life as far back as you can remember. If there's any way you've been putting God last, this is a call to repentance. Repent today and put God first. Thank you for listening. God bless you.